Pseudo activism is when people pretend to be activists yeah. just so that just they can sort of feel like they're making a difference in the world without really doing anything. And pseudo allies are sort of the wear the HRC bracelet as a brand and sort of feel that they're, you know, helping out when they really aren't. And I really like to start this conversation off by reading something I just posted to my Facebook today in kind of a fit of rage. So I'm just going to read that out and then you can sort of tell me how you feel about it. New fucking rule for all you allies out there. If you want to be an ally, then wonderful. Glad to have you on board. But make sure you spend a little bit of time to educate yourself on the issues and when you're hearing about news especially politics make sure to at least take a second to consider how it relates to equality issues if not you're really not an ally you may be supportive but you're not at all you just want to feel that nice warm feeling inside of you that you think when you declare yourself as an ally and that you feel you're making a big difference equality is not won through good meaningless pseudo activism either be an ally or stay on the so on side in quiet support. support. But if you're not if willing you're to not be an ally, please remember that your out. silence is contributing so to our oppression. That's good. I just I, I see this I over and over again where people yeah. feel that you know they have a gay friend or they wear a, they have an HRC sticker on the back of their car. Therefore, there's some great crusading activists for LGBT kind and women's kind, and then they just buy into the society that is you know homophobic, yeah. racist, sexist, Sex. and they even take part in it without really realizing. And when equality issues come up, they don't even think for a moment to actually research the issues that they're trying to say that they're supportive of. Yeah, and I've encountered a, a couple different breeds of people like this. One of them is just misguided, but in a completely outrageous way. Like Lacey Green recently on Tumblr, she was threatened by people who called her transphobic and Islamophobic because apparently she used the word tranny in a video over two years ago and admitted that it was wrong, and then she criticized Islam for being misogynistic, and she has a father who is Muslim. And so just for talking about that, uh, apparently someone saw fit to threaten her, to send her pictures of her apartment, where she lives, and her address and everything, just to like threaten her and that is just completely beyond the pale so here we saw someone who thought they would be some kind of ally by literally threatening some woman's safety over the internet and so that's one way that that goes and that's not helping much. our community whatsoever that's that's just it doesn't help that's, just a mess and the other type of person that we run into, much more common it seems like, although I don't spend that much time on Tumblr, so the former breed of person might indeed be more common than I expected, but these people, we encounter them on reddit.com a lot because Heather and I are in charge of the LGBT section of Reddit, which is the biggest uh, LGBT community on there, and we run into these people who are like straight allies or cis allies, and they end up posting something that's like, it's usually just the generic something, something, I support you, here's how I show my support for you, or something like that. And it's like, okay, that's nice and all, but after, it's a pretty active community, so after we've uh, read such posts the first several hundred times, it starts to get a little old. And it's like, you know, when you just did something that equates to just being a decent human being instead of just standing by and letting prejudice go unaddressed or whatever else you did that's uh, after enough time that should be something that we just expect as normal human behavior instead of something that you deserve special applause for as if you went above and beyond the call of duty there so and yeah a lot of times we, people do express that they're sort of like not really impressed by this by the you know? I get particularly um, irritated when people want to say, I just want to tell all of you LGBT people that I'm sorry. I used to bully people like you when I was in school, and I've come to understand that you're people, and uh, I'm just really sorry about the way the world treats you. And sometimes I'll just go in, and I'll let them know. I'll say, hey, we don't know who the fuck you are. Apologize to the people you bullied. Yeah. But they don't really want to hear that. And and I think that there's gotten to be an ally narrative in the uh, as it relates to say, you know, LGBT activism and our our quest for equal rights. And there's gotten to be, you know, a sort of set of actions that 
allies take part in, the apologizing and the declaration of support and the receiving of praise for such a thing. And not only that, but the I'm an ally, therefore I can say fag, lol, um, sort of thing. And that sort of becomes so common that it's now just a part of their narrative. It's a part of what is expected of people who are straight allies. And we're supposed to praise this. And I don't think anybody's ever... Or, I mean, obviously some people have taken the time, but I don't think enough people have taken the time to question just how, question any of these actions and take notice of how dehumanizing they are. Well, that's um, something, that's, that touches on listen. two things like that I would like to say. One is, if you want to say that you're an ally, great. I, I would love to have more allies. You know, we're fighting a fight. We need allies. But when you say you're an ally, I automatically am going to assume that you're going to go above and beyond what should be normally expected for you and actually be a part of this fight because you, you know you're not calling yourself an activist fine but you're an ally which means you don't just say you're an ally and that's it that's not the end of the story it's like i support you know these people all right show your support don't just say i support these people and i have an hrc sticker on my car therefore i have this little badge you know this little i am an ally badge that allows me to make gay jokes and allows me to just totally ignore lgbt issues you know and here's when they like when they make posts saying mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, it's like, well, okay, you're apologizing, but an apology on behalf of like everyone else is practically meaningless because what does that apology change? It certainly doesn't change everyone else's behavior, you know. So it's pretty hollow. And then when we point that out to them, you know, that we don't really think what you're saying is anything special, you know, we don't see why you deserve any special applause here. Then they start freaking out and everything because we didn't give them their due respect or whatever. And But think about this. If they want a cookie just for whatever they did, like apologizing or standing up for gay people or something or other, well, okay, but how many cookies do the rest of us get for actually going about our lives every day being constantly queer or trans, you know? And I don't think they, a lot of the times, understand that, that, that being straight and being cisgender doesn't especially or particularly equip them to speak for anybody else any more than it would us. Why do they, as straight people, get to say, on behalf of straight people, I apologize to you, rather than us? I mean, why couldn't we take care of that ourselves? Hey, um, on behalf of women, I apologize to you for all the women who ever said anything bad to you. And, I mean, it's just as asinine as anything else. You can only really speak for yourself. You can only really apologize for yourself. Change things as far as an individual basis. As a straight person, you are not the ambassador of straight but so many straight people think that they are, and it gets really tiresome. So, you know, we just heard a lot of the, the same old tired tropes from the allies, and, and, and I really would hope that they would do more than, say, submit pictures of gay people to our atheism and put HRC stickers on their car, or like that one woman that we were at the Pride Parade with, and they, she oh, was like, yeah. she was like, I love being at Pride Parades, and I just wonder if you're in a lesbian couple and nobody's a butch and nobody's a bitch, which one has the baby? You yeah. know, I, I think I would expect somebody, you know, who wants to. I mean, I mean, if somebody wants recognition for being particularly good at treating us like equals, they have to treat us like equals. Yeah. And, and, and listen to most, us, you know? and, and a vast majority of people who want to declare themselves to be allies aren't doing that because what they want is to be seen as allies. They don't understand that the actual act of being an ally to us is just simply the actions of treating us as equal and of being there for us when we need, say, votes. And I've met people who are very good at that and... You know, I suppose we, we could call them allies, but they don't really... I mean, that's not the goal of their life to be an ally. Well, it's yeah. just, and, you know, and, that they and, as equal people. And the thing is, is that I, I don't want to sound mean, but your apology to me as a member of the LGBT community when you didn't attack me personally, Sorry. even if you did even attack me personally, doesn't mean no. shit to me. The truth is, is that I'm much more concerned about your actions than what you feel in your heart about, oh, I'm sorry that I did these things. Fine, we can apologize, but then you need to, like, actually do go on the whole redemptive journey of actually, you know, trying to fight for the side of good instead of saying, well, I said I was sorry about the way I used to act, so I'm good. And I, I see this a lot when it comes to trans issues because, you know, people know less about people who are trans than they do about people who are LGBT. 
and I and constantly I, huh? from straight allies yeah. or cis allies, I run into this thing where people think that it is my job to educate them about the issues. That is, since I am some form of activist, it is my job to spend every waking moment of my time to beat into the back of their head the con the simple concept of what it means to be lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. And it's like, if you want to call yourself an ally, do your own fucking research. But not just that. Most of the time when they're demanding that you educate them, it's because you've corrected them like, hey, please don't call me that word. Oh, really? Why not? I mean, it's, it's not... You, I've almost never been asked to educate somebody who just come up to me out of nowhere and said, you know what, I'm really curious to learn more about LGBT issues. Um, you know, the times that I've been asked to educate people were like, hey, fags, and I was like, can you not say that? Oh, well, yeah, the, then you should educate me as to why of, I shouldn't. <laughs> the kind of expectation they expect, the kind of education they expect from us is like, convince me why I should treat you like a human being, basically, is what it amounts to. And you know what? We don't really feel like taking so much time out of our day for some stranger like you who isn't even really interested in treating us like human beings. And this isn't going to end well, and it's just going to be disheartening for us more than it already is at the background of how often we encounter people like you. So what exactly do I get out of this? I certainly don't expect to gain an ally or just someone else out there who is understanding because a lot of the time they don't actually show any real interest in learning. They might say they do, but they certainly don't show it. And you just get burned enough times with people like that and just it's, it's ridiculous. And it's sort of, and it's, I see this over and over again, where it's sort of the whole ally thing is they're them waxing their own, like, ego like of being like, like, I have taken I, this brave step of being an LGBT ally. And I'm like, it's really not that brave considering we're the ones getting jumped, we're the ones having our rights denied, and we're the ones getting killed in the streets. You are sitting on the back, and it's fine. You're, you know, I'm not, I can't condemn someone for being straight or cisgendered, but it's really not that brave in the grand scheme of things for you to treat me as a human being. Yeah, they're not giving much up. They're not the ones being impacted by it on, on an everyday basis. You know, it's so them acting like it's some noble thing for them to do. It's like, yeah, you're doing the right thing, but sometimes doing the right thing doesn't really deserve any greater level of praise. You're just, it's what you're supposed to do. Especially in contrast to, you know, to the opposing which is, what, campaigning against our rights to be equal? Can, you know, I mean, that's yeah. Just how about just don't be evil isn't any more deserving of praise than, you know, for when you apply it to LGBT rights than it is for anyone else. And when it comes to the education thing is people will say, hey, you know, why aren't you willing to educate people? I'm like, I am willing to educate people. I have produced many YouTube series about I had someone who wanted to be romantically involved with me who personally they were a crossdresser. That's fine. I'm not a crossdresser. I'm transgendered. There is a difference. And they kept calling they, me a crossdresser, and I said, stop calling me that. You are a crossdresser, and that's perfectly all right. I am not a crossdresser, though. I am transgendered. And it's like, why? I'm like, I did a video about this, seriously. Like, like here, read here. this. Well, no, repeat it. I'm like, you know how many times I've had to repeat the I am not a crossdresser, I am not a drag queen? Do your own fucking research. If you don't understand the reason, this is what you need to do. When somebody from a community that you're not part of says, hey, that's kind of bigoted, spend a second to actually look at the material they provide to you and spend a little moment to, to provide the research for you. It's not like it's yeah. my job to repeat the same thing over and over again and be everyone's little equality tutor. It's like a month ago when uh, the Center for Inquiry branch in uh, Ontario, they were planning on marching in pride uh, in drag, they said, to support trans people. And so I, we went, a lot of people, myself included, went ahead and pointed out, you know, dressing in drag for the purpose of saying you support trans people, that's, that's messed up and you don't seem to understand that these are two distinct things and why conflating them is so offensive. And for a while, uh, one of their leaders went back and forth all like, well, we talk to a lot of uh, LGBT people, you know, we consult with people, and, and, and we would just had to be like, you know what, it doesn't matter. Obviously, somewhere along the line, you failed to understand something, and you just really missed something here, and you need to understand that this is offensive. And, uh, and unless, uh, unless all these members of the Center of Inquiry are actual, like, drag like, queens or transgendered, it's really kind of a mockery for them to be marching in the Pride Parade as something they're not. 
I mean, I'm kind of, and I don't want to like bring up this cultural relevance, but I'm kind of reminded of black of blackface. You are pretending to be something that you're not, as some sort of like trying to support these people. You can march in the pride parade as you know straight allies and center of inquiry. Great, we'll we'll love you there, but. I'm not asking you to, to, if you're straight, to make out with that dude, and I'm not asking you to dress in drag. That's kind of offensive to me, because you're trying to co-opt my identity that you don't really have. Yeah, and, yeah, and they, if they were, treating, they were treating drag and being trans as sort of the same, and they're really not. And eventually they did admit that it was wrong, and they said, hey, we won't be doing this, sorry about that, and... But, yeah, that's just why it's so important to listen and, more than that, understand what you're getting into before you do things like this so you don't have to be, you know, corrected after the fact and have it become a big thing. And people people get offended when you tell them, hey, you know, you're being a bigot. And when I take the moment to correct you, which it shouldn't be my job to correct you, by the way. I mean, it's not my job as someone who is LGBT to correct you unless I'm officially servicing my role as an activist to correct you. But I like this person, so I'm going to take this moment to correct them and say, hey, you're being wrong. Don't get mad at me because you're wrong. And you're not even part of the community that I'm telling you that you're being offended. So you really can't speak on behalf of that community. So spend a moment, listen to what I say, do your research, and then reconsider your position. And if you still think that you're not being offensive, then fine. We can have an argument. But don't get mad at me because I pointed out your bigotry. Yeah, and it, it's, it's important to listen. And, you know, not everyone necessarily feels like educating you, but if someone takes the time out of their day to, like, take that upon themselves because they feel this is important then you really should listen to them. There's a reason they're doing this. They're not just doing this, you know, for laughs or just to mess with you. It's an important thing to them. And then people wonder why I start screaming at them. Yeah, so if people would just listen and, you know, not just say that they care about these things, but show that they care about these things. And it's just like, somebody will say that they're an LGBT ally, and then they don't even understand, like, I run into this a lot, because like I said, people don't know trans as much as they know LGB, and people don't even understand what it means to be trans, but they want to call themselves an LGBT ally, and it's like, excuse me, like, been a moment on Wikipedia, I mean, you don't need to be, you know, you don't need to be me, you don't need to be Xenia, you don't need to, like, be able to, like, produce videos and lecture on this, but spend a moment, because there is a lot of material out there discussing the subject. Yeah, you should at least familiarize yourself with it before declaring yourself an ally. I mean, sure, the intention might be great, but the substance of it is pretty much hollow if you don't really understand who you are an ally of. Well, and it has a pretty well, negative side negative. effect, too, because as someone who that, would declare themselves as an activist and not an ally, and a, you know, trying to, you know, spending a large amount of time of my time dedicated to this, when someone tells me they're an ally... I don't care. I, I don't I, even don't regard that as that being important because can, I have seen yeah, – because 99 percent of the allies I come across are the same kind of breed of ally where it's like, yeah, yeah you're an ally, yeah. but you're not a member of the LGBT community, so I'm not really going to consult you in this action or really put you in a high-ranking position because I've seen all of the rest of your allies flake out. And so when you have real allies who are actually out there, they're, they're getting lost in the mess. And the labels that the they don't seem to understand that the labels aren't what matter. Just self identifying as an ally, that's not as important as what you're actually doing. You you can say you're whatever you want, but whatever you whatever you say you are, please just show us that you understand and that you're ready to listen and that you really are allied with us. It's it's a matter of actions, not just uh, what you say you are. And it's like, yeah, we appreciate the support, but there has to be actual support there for us to appreciate. Well, that, and when, you, when somebody says, hey, I'm an ally, yeah. then the next question I'm going to ask you is, hey, how are you going to step up for the community and prove that you're actually an ally instead of just a supporter? Yeah, you know. it's just what does this mean on a practical basis in your life? You know, it's like, what does it actually mean to you? Because you wearing a bracelet or you wearing a sticker does not do anything for me as someone. You know, you wearing a sticker does not prevent me from being jumped in the street. You know, you being a st wearing a sticker doesn't give me my rights. You wearing a sticker is a completely selfish thing to yourself where you want to feel that you're so important. And you're really not to us. You're really just kind of hanging on to the community and trying to, you know, co-opt this identity of being an activist and an ally. And I really wish people would either, you know, just be a quiet supporter 
or if or they're going to be an ally, gonna be, an be an actual ally. ally. And I will welcome you with open arms. And I would love to have you okay. in the fold. And, you know, we can use you. Can use, but, but if you're not a if real not ally, don't ally. call yourself one. Yeah, there needs to be concrete action associated with it for it to be, you know, useful or believable or an actual actually meaning, meaningful to be an ally. And it contributes to this really this terrible sort of internal system where, where activists are almost forced to be cisphobic and straightphobic in the sense that when, when I talk to someone who is straight and cisgendered, and they're saying, hey, they're going to go to the bat for us. You know, you know, you need any help, call us up and we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help out your organization and stuff. I don't trust that, you know. Yeah, they're just saying that for the moment. If I, I at least know, and this is terribly, this is bad that it's gotten to this situation. I at least know that if somebody is homosexual, bisexual, lesbian, asexual, any of those, that at least they're being affected by my work and that they're more likely to actually sh to mean what they say. Don't mm -hmm. don't put me in a situation where I feel like I'm being like straight phobic and tra and cis phobic because I can't because every other person who's been straight cisgendered ally who has said that they will fight you know fight for us has you know flaked out. Yeah, and they don't seem to understand a lot of the time that this really is different for them. This isn't something that they're facing on a on a regular basis and it's not something they have to deal with every day so for them it is different they get the choice of opting into whether they want to be an activist or an ally that day or not but for us we don't get a choice this is something that we're forced to deal with all the time and we're the ones who bear the brunt of it and they almost get offended when you tell them that you know hey you're really not an ally and i get this a lot where people are like you know Hey, hey, you know, that was offensive to say that they're really not doing shit, or, hey, that was offensive to sort of attack that right-wing Christian ideology. And here's the thing that I want to say, is that nobody asked me if I'd be offended when they when I got jumped at even the gay bar and somebody attacked me. Nobody asked me if I'd be offended. Nobody asked me if I'd be offended when they denied me my rights. Nobody asked me if I'd be offended, I'd be offended when, when majority of society looks at me as a freak and somebody who does not belong in our society. So I don't care that much when you say that I've offended the majority that is doing the oppressing. Right, it's, it just doesn't really matter all that much in the big scheme of things. Thanks for listening to Gender Queer Atheist News, a sampling of the daily Gender Queer Atheist Reader. You are welcome to join us on Gender Queer Atheists on Facebook, subscribe to Gender Queer Atheist YouTube, and network with us at Gender Queer Atheists on Atheist Nexus. Links are available in the description below this video. Music by Kevin McLeod. I'm Rogie Riverstone.